Uh, let's just start with the simple question. Why is Hamas launching rockets into Israeli population centers? And are any other Palestinians trying to stop them from doing so? Well, Jack, I think it's important to lay out the sequence of events. Uh, there's been a collective punishment that's been imposed on the West Bank uh, ever since the three Israelis had gone missing. And since that time, the Israelis have been placing a blockade and siege on, on the Gaza Strip, uh, and then later bombing the Gaza Strip. So this is not coming out of a situation of nothing. Now, in order to stop it, there have been attempts by the president to broker a ceasefire. He has all, he's called the United States indicating that he wants the ceasefire to be taken into effect. But uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu has made it absolutely clear that he does not want to have a ceasefire. So given this, this uh, sequence of events, I'm afraid that we're actually going to see things get worse uh, in the short time. Okay. You, I'm glad you got out your talking points there. Let's get back to my question. Why is Hamas launching missiles into population centers of Israel, and are any other Palestinians trying to stop them from doing so? As I've indicated, Jake, there have been attempts to try to stop all of this, but the, for, the fact of the matter is, is that the Israelis have indicated that they are not interested in uh, brokering a ceasefire or seeing any ceasefire take shape whatsoever. So this isn't just a question of people coming together and stopping them, uh, because the Israelis have, cl have indicated very clearly that they don't want this to stop. Israel says Hamas has launched rockets every month for the past 10 years, that since Israel pulled out of Gaza in 2005, 8,000 rockets have been fired from Gaza into Israel. Well, Jake, that's actually factually incorrect. Uh, there have been ceasefires that have been brokered in the past, and each ceasefire that has been, that has been broken has been broken by Israel. It hasn't been broken by Hamas. In terms of the numbers, the numbers, while they sound devastating, in terms of the effect, it's actually not. We're talking about very primitive rockets as compared to the F-16s and F-18s that the Israelis are using against the Palestinians. This is not an equal war. This is a one-side atrocity. And this is why I think it's very important for us to be putting civilians in the center of this and trying to make sure that civilians are protected. The only way I think that this is going to happen is if we have an international protection force that is brought in to ensure that civilians are not being targeted and not being hurt. Well, let's talk about protecting civilians because obviously some Palestinian civilians, some innocent children and the like have been killed uh, in this assault. Israeli government officials say they're trying desperately to avoid civilian casualties and there are reports of the spokesman of Hamas. We actually have the video of him going on Palestinian television urging people to serve as human shields, staying in their homes, even if the IDF is warning people in those homes, because they're Hamas officials' homes, that they're going to be destroyed. They're telling them to stay there. Do you at all find that reprehensible, using women and children to be human shields to protect these homes? Jake, I haven't seen that video, but if that were the case, that would be reprehensible. I think that the bigger picture is that uh, this isn't the case. What we have seen is over the course of the past couple of days, more than 80 Palestinians killed. The population of the Gaza Strip, 43% of it is under the age of 14. And we've seen that half of the people who've been killed are women and children. The idea that Palestinians use children as, as human shields is racist and reprehensible and uh, the idea that the Israelis are somehow spewing this and we're to believe it is also racist. Diana, it's not racist that we have video of the Hamas spokesman on television telling people to stay in their homes. It's an effective way to, to make sure uh, to, to, to fight off the Israelis. That's not racist, that's just a fact. Jake, I haven't seen the tape, first, first and foremost. And secondly, as I've indicated, that if this were the case, then that would be reprehensible. I somehow do not believe, though, that people are going to listen to somebody who says, stay inside while your house is being bombed. People don't want to die, Jake. And the fact that the Israelis continue to uh, drop bombs on them doesn't make, the, make, make them want to die anymore. It's simply a, a fact that what the Israelis are doing is they're dropping uh, bombs of a, of a magnitude that we've never seen before on a captive civilian child population. Well, it's horrific, but I, I can't believe you tell me people don't want to die. There is a culture of martyrdom that we hear about all the time. One of the big differences between uh, the horrific incident of, of uh, Mohammed uh, Qadir being killed and the three Israelis being killed is that whoever killed the three Israelis, it's possible that they will have streets named after them and they'll get money uh, from Hamas or from uh, outside groups for killing the Israelis, whereas the Israeli government condemned the murder of Mohammed Qadir. 
Jake, I think that uh, you're actually mistaking things. If you look inside Israel, there are more than 42 uh, cities that have names of, of, of streets named after people who themselves have killed and very openly killed Palestinians and are proud for killing Palestinians. There isn't a culture of martyrdom, uh, Jake. This is, a, this is a situation in which Palestinians are being killed by the Israelis. Palestinians live and they want to live. They want to uh, be able to live just like every other human being around the world. And this constant refrain of a culture of martyrdom is very offensive. Palestinians just want to live their lives as normal human beings. And the fact that this uh, military occupation has gone on for such a long time is what is creating a situation which Palestinians are dying, not because they want to die, but because Israel's killing them. Diana Butu, thank you so much. Thank you.